But before moving forward with what private link is and how it works, just forget everything about AWS. If in general I ask you what do you get in your mind when I say this term private link, more like speaking in a common English vocabulary, so you might tell me that yes it's a link, then it must be connecting something or two points maybe, creating a connection between them, like creating a link. And if it's a private link, then the parties involved in the communication link are the only ones who can interact with each other at a given point of time, isn't it? And that's how a private link is formed. Now, if I ask you, if you have a VPC, will it become public by default? Or you might need to perform some operations or add some features for it to be accessed by the public or the internet. And you will say, yes, of course, we need to add a NAT or internet gateway and make them part of our subnet associations. And any instance we create in that subnet, if we have the public DNS enabled, will be accessible to the outside world. That's for the public part. When it comes to the private access, we have already discussed three important concepts. I hope you remember them. The first one is creating your own private subnet, then creating your NAT gateways and routing it through your instances. Second one, you can create your very own site-to-site -site VPN and access your VPC instances and services. And the third one, which we discussed in the last session, that was using Direct Connect. With all these, we have tried to make our best efforts to provide a secure connection, isn't it? But the configuration overhead is more and we want a much simpler solution to connect our VPCs and the services. Having said that, let's introduce ourselves to a service called AWS Private Link. This will help us establish private connectivity between VPCs and services hosted on AWS or on-premise without exposing data to the internet. And that is the link that we want to create. And that's where Private Link helps us with. If we have to imagine AWS Private Link, there should be a private endpoint using which we will be able to talk to services across other accounts and VPCs and which will not be exposed to the public internet. It's simple, isn't it? So remember, private link in itself is not a service, but a method where we create a specific endpoint which will help us to privately communicate and make use of services in other accounts or VPCs. We don't have to make use of any internet gateway, NAT device, public IP address to communicate with services. And the best and the most important thing is to remember that traffic between your VPC and the services does not leave the Amazon network. And that's why we have mentioned here secure private connectivity simplified. And that's what private link is. But when I say it's simple, it doesn't mean that you have to just sit back and relax and you don't have to do anything. Yes, you have to make some changes and you need to bring in some mechanism to achieve the creation of the link. And that's what we will discuss next. When you think of private link, remember that you need to understand two concepts very clearly. One is the VPC endpoint, which will help you create the Elastic Network interface with the private IP, which acts as the entry point for the traffic to the service. And the next one is the endpoint service where we create an AWS private link powered endpoint service so that the service that we want to expose can be available for usage. So one is the consumer and other one is the producer. Confusing? Don't worry. Imagine it like this. So we have John who is working in the engineering team and he wants to use a firewall application that is being provided by the security team which Lily is working with. For this to work, they can create a private link connection by using the endpoint at the John's side and create a service endpoint on Lily's side to securely access a service. And that too, without using public internet connection. I hope you got the idea now. So here, as you can see, John is asking that I need to use the firewall application. Can you help me? And what Lily says is, yes, I have this service that you need. Let's create a link. And that's how in real time, actually things work. If you're working with other teams, you need to communicate with them and they might create a service endpoint for you so that you can access their services. I think we have discussed enough now. Let's see how it actually works. So this is our playing ground, which is our AWS region. So what is our main goal here? So we will try and connect our VPC to another VPC 
that could be in our account or in any other account and we will access the services provided by a producer so here we will act as the consumer but as we are in a learning process think from both sides as you could fall into any of the categories think as a consumer as well as a producer let's start off with our consumer part here we have our consumer vpc with the cider block 10.0.0.0 slash 16 and we have the private subnet where we have our instances and this is where we will create our interface vpc endpoint which helps us to create our elastic network interface with the private ip that we have here and this will act as our connection point for the first part of the link now let's go to the producer side okay so don't get confused here we have a vpc here as well not that of a big surprise here so if you see the instances here these are the appliance instances that host the service so these instances are the ones that hold the service for you and there is one more important thing here that makes the link possible which is the network load balancer which receives requests from the service consumers and routes them to your services so in order to create a vpc endpoint service you need a network load balancer remember that so now that we have all this set up how do we create the connection first thing you need to understand is that if you want your service to be consumed by the consumer you need to create a service endpoint there is an option in your vpc called vpc endpoint service where you can configure a service endpoint using the network load balancer that you have and you can have a private dns for that as well once you create the vpc endpoint service the consumer has to create an endpoint using the endpoint service dns to create a successful connection and that's where the connection starts so don't get confused here you already know vpc endpoints can be created by three options one with aws marketplace second one with aws services and the last one is with vpc service endpoints that is where you will enter the producer vpc's service point dns to configure your consumer endpoint to make use of the private link to send your request to the network load balancer in order to access the service hosted by the producer that's it your private link connection is ready so if you are the producer and you want your services to be consumed make sure that you have the vpc service endpoint which is basically using the network load balancer to talk to the instances that you have and that service endpoint has to be configured by the consumer by creating a vpc endpoint connection which makes use of the service endpoint that you have here and then generates the private link connection to that and there are a few access permissions that you have to define which we will discuss in the demo so don't worry about that let's move on now let's see some of the benefits of using aws private link so that you can make your own decisions the first point is secure the traffic this is a very general idea that we have already spoken about which tells us that you can use your private link connection to securely access aws service from your vpc without having to make use of the public internet space everything remains in your aws network and that's the best part which in turn reduces the risk of leading to a brute force attack and distributed denial of service attacks or the ddos attacks and while creating a vpc endpoint you can have a pinpoint control over the access as you have to provide the details about your vpc id interface type the vpc service endpoint name the subnet ids and the security groups that actually make it more secure the second point is simplify network management so with aws privately in order to access services across other vpcs you don't need to configure any internet gateway or you don't have to provision any vpc peering connection and you don't have the overhead to manage the cider blocks to avoid conflicts thus it's a very simple way to manage your network third one is accelerate your cloud migration here you need to understand that you might be using a site to site vpn or direct connect to connect to your aws services and that's it you don't have to manage anything more than that this actually helps you to be worry free about migrating your services to the cloud because you will be confident that your service access will be secure that is why it is already written here easily migrate traditional on premises application to software as a service offering hosted in the cloud with aws private link and if suppose you are a producer and you want to do that you can also do that so that others can leverage your services now let's see some of the basic features of using aws private link we have spoken a lot about how good private link is but 
AWS doesn't want us to stop here. So first one is accessing services over AWS private link. So here as well, we have already discussed this as you can create your endpoints and add the service endpoints that you need and you can securely access the service that you want. Second one is sharing your services over AWS private link. So if you are a producer and you wish to make your services accessible for other consumers to access, then you can create your AWS private link powered service endpoints. And others who want to make use of it can use your endpoint name and you can accept their connection requests the third point is privately connecting to your on-premise applications so this is also what we have already discussed just now that you will be using a site-to-site -site vpn or a direct connect to connect to your aws services and and you don't have to manage anything more than that and that actually helps you to be very free about migrating your services to the cloud and and accessing the services that are already hosted on aws through the private connections that you want last but a very interesting point here integrating or the integration with aws marketplace so did you know that aws private link is integrated with services in the aws marketplace where you can find existing services and make use of them as per your requirement did you know that but yes it does so aws private link allows you to discover purchase and provision aws private link enable software as a service products through aws marketplace and AWS Private Link enables you to securely pass data directly to the SaaS application or the software as a service application without ever leaving the AWS network. That's something that has made AWS Private Link a much more acceptable solution for most use cases. You don't need any public IP address to access these services and you don't even have to move out of your AWS network. That's so cool, isn't it? And there are companies that have their services hosted on AWS and you can make use of them. So for example, we have Cisco. So Cisco provides a cloud monitoring tool called Cisco StealthWatch Cloud, which helps you to send your data for monitoring and it provides visualization as well. That's cool, isn't it? So yeah, that's it. So now let's see how private link connects using your on-premise locations. So imagine you're working for a hybrid architecture and you wish to connect to your AWS cloud. So you might be using a site to site VPN or you will be using a direct connect connection, isn't it? Having said that, let's assume you are using a direct connect connection. Here we have our data center. Then we create the direct connect connection to talk to our AWS VPC instances privately. So in our VPC, we create the VPC endpoint to talk to the network load balancer that we have in the form of our VPC endpoint service, which in turn takes our request to the service that we want to access. And that's how a private link connection with the VPC endpoint service is formed. And that's how the users on the on-premise location are able to talk to the services privately using our private link connection. I know that we have another option which is called gateway load balancer using which we can create a private link connection. And that is something that we will talk about in the next session. So don't worry about that. For now, just concentrate on this part. You have your data centers, you have your direct connect connections, you connect to your VPC that you have privately, you create your VPC endpoint using the VPC endpoint service that you have. And from there, you can connect to any of the services that you want. Having said that, make sure there is a service endpoint available. Else, if you want to access any generic services, you can do that by using the AWS services list.